Several years ago, I was introduced to an artist named Emily, who made some really cool handmade jewelry. It was so good, strangers would actually walk up and ask where she got it. And when she would mention she made it herself, wow. generally the next question was, would you make it for me too? The problem was that even though Emily was kind of intrigued by the thought of making money with her jewelry, she didn't think she could run a business. Aww. Now, I don't know much about jewelry, but I do know one of the hardest parts of starting a business is getting people to want whatever it is that you're selling. And I love helping people take their skills and talents to make money, and I really wanted to help Emily because she had so much potential. And Emily's reasons for not wanting to start a business were pretty rational. Uh, she was a busy mom, she had three kids, and she just felt overwhelmed by the mere thought of adding a business to her already full plate. Emily also feared the unknown aspects of business, like the legalities, financial management, marketing, and you know, all kinds of other things. And despite having a product that people already wanted, I didn't want to see her self-doubt and fear of failure keep her from trying. And you may be watching this video because maybe you have a fantastic idea, but might be feeling a little hesitant to take that next step. But trust me, you are not alone. Yeah, starting a business can be scary, but if Emily's story sounds close to yours, you should stick around for the rest of the video because I'm gonna go over three tips that I think uh, helped Emily feel confident enough to take the first step and start her business, and I hope it helps you too. Tip number one, using planning and research to minimize risks. To prevent Emily from feeling overwhelmed, we broke down her larger vision into smaller, manageable steps. Seeing this list of steps on paper all of a sudden took this big, unknown and scary concept of starting a business into a series of small steps that were easy for her to do. We also put together a financial plan to detail how much it was going to cost to start and how much jewelry she needed to sell uh, to make this uh, endeavor worth her time. And it turned out that even making a few sales a week were going to have a pretty nice impact on their family's budget. Number two, start small and learn from experience. Once we had this plan in place, I encouraged Emily to just get started. She thought everything had to be in place and perfect before starting. And after working with so many business owners, I can tell you right now that nothing is ever going to be perfect, ever. So to be successful in business, you do the best that you can at the time, but what's super important here is to keep improving. She launched with just a handful of designs to keep her costs low and then used this start to get real customer feedback so she can make the necessary adjustments and improve her business over time. Number three, look at failure as a learning opportunity. I also helped Emily understand that failure is a part of any entrepreneurial journey and it doesn't signify a personal failure if something goes wrong, which can sometimes be hard for entrepreneurs entrepreneurs to separate. I think this may have been the biggest fear holding her back because she didn't want to look like she didn't know what she was doing in front of her friends and family. And one of the reasons I recommended starting small earlier was that the mistakes will also be small. So for example, if she were to start off and overinvest in inventory before getting feedback from customers, she could have been holding on to a lot of product that nobody wanted to buy. Even though there was a lot of planning, Emily's journey was not without a few speed bumps and bumps and bruises. Uh, one significant mistake that she made early on, even though we worked on the pricing of her jewelry, turned out to be a valuable learning experience. And after a few months of operation, she noticed that despite having a good number of sales, she wasn't making a lot of profit. Emily was worried about uh, losing customers if she charged too much, and this thought came about since there was this other vendor at many of the same events she was at who didn't charge as much for her jewelry, but the quality and uniqueness of this competitor's designs were not as good. And just so you know, pricing too high is a common fear by business owners. So my advice for you is to be sure to not only calculate the cost of the materials, but also take into account how much time you spend making the product or providing the services that you sell, in addition to the other overhead costs that come along with owning a business. And while owning a business can be fun, if you're making less than minimum wage, it becomes a whole lot less fun in my opinion. So don't make the same mistake as Emily and let your competitor drive your prices and as a result, not make much from your time and efforts. And I'm not saying here to ignore the competition, but if you really are selling a better quality product or service, be sure to price it right. One of my favorite stories about pricing uh, was this couple I worked with who rented these really nice cabins, uh, had hot tubs and a deck that overlooked beautiful forest. And they priced it like other not as nice cabins in the, this rural area. Now their wake up call was when a customer from a large city who was wanting to visit the area called 
and asked, what's wrong with your cabins? The cabins may have been priced right for locals. Their customer base was not the locals. It was wealthy people coming from out of town and they were used to paying a whole lot more for nice accommodations. So pricing your product or service is super important, not only for profit, but it can also convey the perception of quality. Well, that wraps up this video on overcoming fear to start a business. I hope this story was helpful to you. Uh, you, like Emily, have the potential to create an amazing business, and I hope that you don't let fear hold you back from trying. Remember, every successful entrepreneur started with a dream and the courage to take that first step. Your dreams are worth pursuing too, and despite the voices in your head that may be telling you otherwise, you have what it takes to succeed. I get inspired by uh, stories of people starting their business, and if this video inspired you to take the next step, or maybe there's still a fear that's holding you back, please let me know in the comments. I'm here to help you get started, and at startingyourbusiness.com, we offer an array of resources designed to help aspiring entrepreneurs like you turn your dreams into reality. Thanks for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.